in a world where hi-fi power filters, conditioners and regenerators like PS Audio or Audio Quest can be costly, you might wonder if there is some more affordable way to improve the quality of the power supply going into your audio devices. Many inexpensive products claim to do this, but are they really effective and a good idea to implement them in your system? Let's investigate. In this video, I'll present you two solutions that you can perhaps find helpful. The first of them is the AS-EU08 power conditioner, which comes at roughly $200. It's not the cheapest option to simply get more power outlets out of a single one, but it can do just that much more, which in my opinion makes it at least worth considering. The first thing we notice immediately after picking it up is the weight and the build quality. It's outstanding. It's made out of three solid pieces of metal and weighs about 3 kilograms. The solid metal enclosure works effectively like shielding, greatly reducing the noise getting in and out of it. There are eight pure copper European Shuko power sockets on top, each separated by about a centimeter of space to make plugging in larger barrel plugs easier or in some cases possible at all. Next to the outlets there is a fancy power switch with a red LED that illuminates when the power is on and turns off when either the switch is turned off or the power switch is unplugged. The power switch itself feels very tactile and it's of a high quality standard. On its side we've got even more audiophile goodies. Of course there is a breaker, but in addition to that there is a ground connector that can take a bare wire a banana plug or a spade connector. I didn't end up using it, but I did check if the terminal works properly. I was pleasantly surprised to find out that it makes very good contact with banana plugs especially, without causing any damage to them due to excessive clamping. Speaking of contact, making good contact with a power cable going into the device is equally as important as making a good contact with the power cables going out of it. As this power filter lets you use your own hi-fi power cables. I appreciate it a lot. I also appreciate the power connector used on it. It's an audio-grade Furutech one with a model number FI-06 in what seems to me like a rhodium-plated version. It securely holds my hi-fi power cables without squeezing them too tightly, but ensuring a good connection. For the internal wiring, instead of using some thin and unknown material options, they used 4mm square PVC insulated pure copper cables and made them as short as possible to reduce resistance. Inside there is an array of blue capacitors made for EMI filtering accompanied by a metalized paper safety capacitor. It may look good on paper, but you're probably as curious as I am if it had any impact on the sound quality. In the past I have experienced instances where using low quality power conditioners resulted in a worse sound. It was more restricted and less dynamic. However, this product seems to do the opposite. After plugging in my integrated amplifier to this power conditioner, the sound seemed a bit more refined, with a darker background and more dynamics. Why would that be, you might ask? I would assume that the blackness of the background comes from a lower noise floor, or the amount of noise getting into the components. The same goes for the dynamics, as it allows for a higher difference between the lowest level signal, in this case noise, and the highest level signal, the dynamic peaks. The slight improvement in the refinement likely comes from the quality of the parts used, as even small things can have an impact on the sound. The sound path starts at the AC stage, and then gets converted into other types of energy, so essentially the sound you're getting goes through all these internal parts. If it's not enough, this power conditioner additionally serves the function of protecting your expensive gear against power surges, lightning strikes or any other similar accidents that could otherwise destroy your equipment. One thing is the AC noise that can be minimized by a power filter, while another is the DC noise generated by low quality switch mode power supplies and imperfections in the USB data bus. These issues are much more complex in their nature and require more specialized tools to reduce their impact on the audio quality. I've got a device which aims precisely to do that. The SPUSB is a small yet weighty rectangular aluminum box that comes in black or silver colorway. I have a silver one. 
On the front, there is a nice front plate with a cutout to fit a blue LED digital display that acts like a voltage indicator. All of the I.O. is located on the rear of the unit, which is the perfect position to place it in my opinion. It makes cable positioning, especially with thick, audio grade ones, much, much easier and cleaner. There is a USB Type-B input, but not in a regular form. It's a 3.0 port that can support higher speeds if needed, and despite its different shape, it's backwards compatible with the more popular USB 2.0 standard. There are two USB outputs. One carries both data and power, while the other is only for power and cuts out USB data. We have a unique switch that has a satisfying tactile feel when pressed. Its primary function is to control how the grounding process occurs. The switch can either connect the ground to the device's chassis or disconnect it when it's in the top position. It's usually better to keep the switch in the bottom position, leave it on, but feel free to experiment with both options to see which one works better for you. There is a standard power socket that is positioned in a way that allows you to fit larger power cables accompanied by a small power switch. Now let's get to the internals. It uses a built-in, low-noise, linear, stabilized power supply to replace the high-noise switch mode power supply from the PC. So it essentially cuts out the power from your PC and replaces it with clean, stabilized 5 volts and up to 3 amps of power generated by a toroidal transformer. Moreover, it uses a high-speed op-amp and a MOS output stage to reduce and regulate the voltage even further. For the data line, the data coming in and out goes through Foxconn's USB terminals. Then it goes through a balanced noise illumination circuit, working together with hi-fi filtering electrolytic capacitors and EMI filter inductors. Regarding the sound quality improvements, quite a few things got better, which was surprising and proves that digital isn't always perfect. First of all, a blacker background was noticeable when taking it in and out of the system. It's definitely not a bad feature to have, as it makes for a much more enjoyable experience once you solve all of your noise-related issues. Then, the biggest improvement I heard was the lack of the high-frequency glare that I didn't even know I had to begin with. It made the upper range cleaner and more natural. Although it didn't sacrifice any details, perhaps it made the sound ever so slightly more detailed. 